The Book of Enoch, banned from the Bible, reveals shocking mysteries of our history. The Enoch manuscript begins with a warning to all mankind and to the fallen angels who have made the earth a home of debauchery, bloodshed, and sorcery. The huge forbidden book was written about 200 years ago, with the earliest writings in it dating back to around 300 BC and the latest records around 100 BC. The Book of Enoch was removed from the Jewish and Christian biblical canons in the first centuries of the New Calendar. It reveals secrets about which the church is silent. According to the ancient writings, Enoch was the guardian of all the treasures of heaven, the chief of the archangels, and the immediate minister of the throne of God. There is also talk about the fallen angels and the fact that they sinned here on earth, because they began to multiply with earthly women and revealed to them heavenly secrets for which the human race was not yet ready. The prohibition of the book was most likely also influenced by the fact that it contained prophecies about Christ himself. Stay until the end of the video to find out what the most mysterious and sacred book in the entire spiritual history of mankind scares the church with. Who is Enoch? Enoch is the son of Jared, a descendant of the first man, Adam, from his seventh generation, the great-grandfather of the famous Noah. He is a teacher and educator, his name translates as, initiator. The Old Testament does not speak of his writings, but still gives him a place in Genesis chapter 5 21-24, just enough to indicate the number of his years 365, confirming the existence of his person and describing his life-life in the laconic phrase that has given rise to countless interpretations. And Enoch walked after God and disappeared because God took him. There is also a legend that Enoch is actually the biblical king and priest Melchizedek. One of the traditional explanations for the parallel existence of Christian Apocrypha, L literature alongside the official one is that the Apocrypha provide answers, where Holy Scripture is silent or behaves mysteriously. Enoch is also credited as the creator of writing and astrology. In addition, he communicates with God and is a religious teacher of the people, a prophet and a sage. Many church fathers such as Justin Martyr, Athenagoras of Athens, Irenaeus, Clement of Alexandria, Origen, Tertullian and Lactantius wrote about him, who spoke with great respect for Enoch. Their writings contain many allusions to the book of Enoch and in some cases explicitly advocate the use of the book itself as scripture. Going back to the book of Genesis, where he is described as the seventh of the ten patriarchs, before the flood, each of them is said to have lived for several centuries. Genesis chapter 5 presents the genealogy of these ten individuals from Adam to Noah, indicating the age at which each became the father of the next, as well as the age of each at death. However, we notice here that Enoch is an exception, who is said to have not seen death, written in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5. Furthermore, Genesis chapter 5 22 to 24 states that Enoch lived 365 years, which is significantly less than the other antediluvian patriarchs, who were recorded as dying at over 700 years of age. The brief account of Enoch in Genesis chapter 5 ends with the cryptic scripture that he was not, for God took him. All that we shall narrate hereafter, viewed on a larger scale, shows Enoch's great devotion to the Lord and, respectively, the great love and special treatment of the Lord to Enoch. According to some theories, Enoch was translated alive into the kingdom of God as his angel. This is how the words, he has not seen death, are interpreted. Let's look at the five volumes written by Enoch to understand what is contained there, who scares and with what. Watcher's Book This book marks the beginning of the manuscript. It was written around 300 BC. Describes the fall of the watchers or watcher angels who become the fathers of the Nephilim. Genesis chapter 6 1-4 In this writing are also the accounts of Enoch's travels in the heavens. The book opens with an introduction that says Enoch is a righteous man whose eyes were opened by God so that he saw the visions sent to him by the Holy One in heaven. 
He showed him the sons of God and from them he hears everything and knows that, which he sees, but what he saw will not happen to this generation, but to a generation that is yet to come. The book also tells us about God coming to earth on Mount Sinai, with his armies to pronounce judgment on humanity. How all things are predestined by God and happen in his own time. The sinners will perish and the great and the good will continue to live in light, joy and peace. The first section of the book describes the interaction of fallen angels with humanity. Semiazaz forces the remaining 199 fallen angels to take human wives to bear them children. And Semjaza, who was their leader, said to them, I am afraid that you will not really agree to do this deed, and I alone will have to pay the penalty for a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear and all bind ourselves by mutual oaths not to abandon this plan, but to do this deed. Then all together swore and bound themselves by mutual curses upon him. And they were two hundred in all, who went down in the days of Jared to the top of Mount Hermon, and called it Mount Hermon, because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual oaths upon it. This leads to the creation of the Nephilim or giants as described in the book, and they became pregnant and gave birth to great giants whose height was three hundred fits, who destroyed all the gains of men. There was real hell and chaos on earth. The book also discusses the decadent training of humans by fallen angels, most notably Azazel, and Azazel taught men to make swords, and knives, and shields, and breastplates, and made them acquainted with the metals of the earth, and with the art of working them, with bracelets, with ornaments, with the use of antimony, with the beautifying of the eyelids, with all kinds of precious stones, and with all colorings. And much wickedness arose, and they committed fornication, and went astray, and became corrupt in all their ways. Semjaz taught enchantment and eradication, Armeros the resolution of enchantments, Barakijal astrology, Kokobel the constellations, Ezekiel the knowledge of clouds, Erekil the signs of the earth, Shamsil the signs of the sun, and Sariel the course of the moon. Then Michael, Uriel, Raphael and Gabriel appealed to God to judge the inhabitants of the world and the fallen angels. God sends Uriel to tell Noah about the coming cataclysm and what he must do. Then the Most High said, Go to Noah and say to him on my behalf, Hide yourself, and reveal to him the end that is coming, that the whole earth will be destroyed, and that a flood will come upon the whole earth and destroy everything that is on it. And now instruct him, that he may be saved, and that his seed may be preserved for all the generations of the world. God commands Raphael to imprison Azazel, gives Gabriel instructions regarding the Nephilim, and commands Michael to bind the fallen angels. Book of Proverbs Chapters 37-71 of the Book of Enoch are called the Book of Proverbs. Here the scholarly debate centers on the thesis that it is based on the Book of the Watchers, as a supplement in which it presents the later development of the idea of the final judgment and eschatology dealing not only with the fate of the fallen angels but also with of the wicked kings of the earth. What is interesting about this book is that the expression, son of man, is used for the eschatological hero who is also called, righteous one, elect one, and, messiah, sitting on the throne of glory at the final judgment. The first known use of, son of man, as a specific title in the Hebrew scriptures is in the book of Enoch and its use may have played a role in the early Christian understanding and use of the title. The Astronomical Book Four fragmentary editions of the Astronomical Book were found at Qumran. They also include material not found in later versions of the Book of Enoch. This book contains descriptions of the movement of the heavenly bodies as well as knowledge of the cosmos revealed to Enoch on his journeys to heaven, guided by Uriel. It describes the solar calendar, which was later also described in the Book of Jubilees used by the Dead Sea sect. The year was composed of 364 days, divided into four equal seasons of 91 days each. Each season consisted of three equal months of 30 days each, plus one extra day at the end of the third month. Thus the whole year consisted of exactly 52 weeks. Each year and each season always began on Wednesday which was the fourth day of creation as told in Genesis, the day on which the lights in the sky, the seasons, the days and the years were created. The Book, Dreams 
It contains visions of Israel's history all the way back to what most interpret as the Maccabean Revolt dated to the Maccabean period around 163 to 142 BC. According to the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, it was written before the biblical flood. The book continues with visions and allegorical accounts of Israel's history in which animals are used as symbols of human beings and people as symbols of angels. The Message of Enoch Scholars date this manuscript to somewhere around 170 BC. The book is divided here into five subsections. Apocalypse of the Weeks This subsection tells the story of the world using a structure of ten periods called weeks, seven of which relate to the past and three to future events. The climax is in the seventh part of the tenth week, when a new heaven shall appear. And there shall be many weeks without number until the age, and all shall be in goodness and righteousness. Next, Exhortation This short list of exhortations to follow righteousness spoken by Enoch to his son Methuselah is a bridge to the next subsection. Epistle The first part of the epistle describes the wisdom of God, the final reward of the righteous and the punishment of the wicked, and the two separate paths of righteousness and unrighteousness. Then there are six oracles against sinners, the testimony of all creation against them, and the assurance of the fate after death. Next, the birth of Noah. This part appears in the Qumran fragments, separated from the previous text by a blank line, thus appearing as an appendix. It tells about the flood and about Noah, who was born with the appearance of an angel. Finally, conclusion. This application is not found in Qumran and is considered to be the work of the last redactor. It emphasizes the generation of light in opposition to sinners doomed to darkness. Why is this ancient Bible book neglected and even banned by official religion when it contains so much history about our roots? What else does she say? It has already become clear that one of the reasons for the banning of the book is most likely due to the fact that, that at the very beginning, it begins with a warning to mankind describing the divine judgment that will meet all those unworthy of salvation. The following is the explanation of how the bloodthirsty giants, also called Nephilim, who roamed the earth, described in Genesis, appeared. They also serve as an excuse for the flood, but God still warned Noah and saved the people. The accounts of Enoch's travels through the kingdoms of heaven, which detail the powers of heaven and the cruelty that awaits depraved people, are also likely to be disliked. Wasn't the church's problem rooted in the fact that it scared the faithful into having such detailed information? And maybe some facts in this information are inconvenient? The book directly and openly talks about strange creatures with advanced technology that visited our earth. They shared their technology with their hybrid offspring, which was a huge detriment to humanity. The book describes very clearly how and why all evidence of this was wiped out by the Great Flood. One thing is for sure. There is something in this book that bothers a lot of people. Is this not evidence of ancient aliens visiting earth? Who? And how did Enoch ascend and descend on his journeys to heaven and back? Can we assume that these were extraterrestrials and that Enoch was in contact with one of the sovereigns of this society? Answers to which no one is looking for the answers today. At least not overtly, because these writings have been denied and branded as apocryphal. All we have to do is read between the lines and wait for the day when the truth will be revealed to us. You can find more interesting knowledge in our channel. Don't forget to support us by sharing this video and subscribing to the channel.